it's a mind shift for folks to work together and to give. And if there's anything I would say about coalition building, that is the key to come with a, how can I help you and your organization succeed? Because if each organization in the coalition is successful, then the coalition succeeds. This is about together taking meaningful action. Welcome to Business Leaders with Soul, a podcast showcasing the change makers and innovators of our times who are ushering in a new age of conscious business. They're authentic, they're original, and their message connects with the people they're here to serve. Be inspired by these futurists and make the difference that you too came here to make. And now, here's your host, Lee Aldridge. Hi, everybody. I'm Lee Aldridge with Soul Story Creative, where we don't tell you who to be. We show the world who you are. And we have got a great show for you today. Today we have with us Mary Krista Smith, CEO and founder of Conscious Coalition Consulting, to share her thoughts on this age of conscious business and what that means to her. Now, as a lifelong Utahn, passionate about her land, her community, and the planet, Mary Krista is dedicated to creating conscious coalitions that make a big impact in the well-being of humanity and our planet. With decades of experience facilitating groups in diversity and inclusion training and building alliances, Mary Krista's approach to building conscious coalitions is dynamic, not prescriptive, and is informed by the situation at hand. She's a map maker and a trusted confidant who knows exactly how to guide visionaries on their right path to building sustainable and unshakable coalitions focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Mary Krista's clients realize their vision and become known for their commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Mary Krista, welcome. Thank you, Lee. It's such a pleasure to be here with you today. Thanks for the invitation. It is great to have you. I've been wanting to have you on the show. This is just such a Amazing work you do. I'm very familiar with it as you and I were able to work together building your brand story and your yes. signature, your signature system. You've got these five keys that we just can't wait to hear about. I know our listeners are going to love it. But before we get to that, I want our listeners to understand how you got your start. Would you mind sharing with us about that? Sure. Thanks for asking. Um, when I think about where I got my start as uh, a leader in coalitions and diversity, equity, and inclusion work, it goes back to my training at university. I was a gender studies major and taught gender studies at the high school level. And there's no tougher audience than high school age kids. And my mastery of facilitation found its roots in that experience. I I'm passionate about community level work and bringing people together within our community to tackle problems that are larger than any one person or organization can solve. I had the opportunity to develop and lead a coalition called Summit Community Power Works around the Georgetown University Energy Prize. That was a two year project and I really fell in love with the power of coalitions and uh, the importance that they have in this time in the world that we are needing to build partnerships and trust and collaborate across organizations. And uh, most recently, I have uh, been the executive director of um, Communities That Care Summit County. Again, a coalition focused on youth, mental health, and well-being and that has been a five-year project, and it's just been an incredible opportunity to learn in the trenches what works, what doesn't work. So that's how I got my start, Lee. That is so great. Gosh, what great work you're doing. You know, um, 
the the this last five year project, you really brought that uh, communities that care. I'm very familiar with that and the work you did for that from it being just a, a fledgling offshoot a uh, uh, backstory, you know, it's on the back burner, well, this or that, and you came in and just turned it around. I mean, it did take a while, but the public service announcements, the collateral, the the systems and processes are fantastic, but it was the, the reigning in of people who are as passionate about their own organization, their own mission, and it's hard to bring people who are leaders together when they have their own. Yes. I mean, I think you are coming right to the heart of the challenge of leading coalitions. I like to say it was a twinkle in someone's eye. It was a dream. It was a need, but it didn't exist in our community yet. And I was hired and charged with bringing this coalition to ground. And to your point, you know, it is a coalition of leaders. I, it's not, you know, serving the youth per se, but serving the people who serve the youth in our community. And it's a choice between hope and fear. It's a choice between abundance and scarcity. It's, it's the belief and the foundational belief that there's enough for everybody. And I certainly believe in the work of youth mental health and well-being. There is plenty to go around. There are plenty of resources. There's plenty of work to do. There are um, numerous opportunities for all the organizations to thrive and to be seen as the leaders that they are. And, um, you know, that's always been a conscious choice that I make every step of the way, either to collaborate or to compete. And, you know, collaboration is one of our key values at Communities That Care. And so that is the filter through which all of the work flows. But certainly, you know, the founding of my uh, company, Conscious Coalition Consulting, comes from that experience and how often I see leaders struggle with building alliances and partnerships that are mutually thriving, um, how to facilitate those conversations amongst key stakeholders. It's challenging. It requires a certain kind of expertise and um, confidence in that space. And that's what I bring to support leaders. And I see the, the need for it all across our community and across the world. It's true. It could just ripple out what you do. But, you know, you do. You talk about facilitating these conversations that it requires expertise and confidence. And, of course, that's what you're a master at. But there's one component that I've never heard anybody do. And you look at the physical. Like we, There's so many um, consultants for these sorts of things or just creating um, conscious cultures. There's so much about the work culture now. It's in such flux, redefining, re-innovating, and it's, it re, in, we're re-innovating it and inventing new ways to work together. So people go at the team building in different ways, but can you speak to this one piece? Um, and maybe it's getting into your solution. But coalitions, I think the, the point you made is coalitions are the number one way to bring about change because you're going to allocate the human resources and get everybody talking, not only the leaders. But what is this physical piece of it, the harmony? Is that? Yeah, I'm happy to. Um, I think what makes my approach unique, and it comes from my experience and study for over 30 years in nature, wisdom, traditions, earth-based spiritual traditions from across the globe, uh, most notably the Andean uh, tradition as well as North American indigenous traditions and the knowing and the recognition that we are physical beings, but we are also emotional, mental, and spiritual beings. And so often what I see in business is people leading strongly with the mental, and sometimes the emotional comes into play, 
but leaving out the physical and leaving out the spiritual. And in order to have holistic, regenerative, sustainable solutions, sustainable coalitions and partnerships, um, people wanting to show up to work and feel whole and authentic in the work that they're doing, uh, we really need to approach all of our meetings, retreats, our day-to-day -day operations from this understanding, this medicine wheel perspective of the mental, the emotional, the physical, and the spiritual. And to your point about the physical, spaces shape our experience. If you are holding a meeting in a space that is cluttered, that smells like yesterday's lunch, that is dusty and dirty, that does not have natural light, people are going to feel a certain way when they come into the space. And all the conversation and the solutions that are developed in that meeting are going to be informed at a foundational level by the space. And so part of the work that I do with leaders is come into the spaces where they're working. And certainly we could do this remotely as well. There's remote spaces, digital spaces, but I often go into physical spaces and help leaders uh, sense, you know, the room, what's being held there. And one of the most interesting opportunities I had recently with a nonprofit leader as they were moving into a new office and really had an opportunity to have a fresh start with their team, there was a lot of competition amongst their team. Um, and what we did, instead of sitting the people down and talking about the competition, we worked this challenge from the issue, from the perspective of the space. We went in and cleared it. We rearranged furniture. We rearranged the way desks and seats were facing and connected to one another. And just changing the physical space changed the dynamics amongst the staff in a way that we didn't have to do head to head confrontation, sit down with HR and have a big conversation. Now, those things may be necessary, but if we come to it from a holistic perspective, we can shift and move so much um, in really beautiful, creative, healthy ways. And, and it saves time. It yes, saves it does. time. It saves a lot of energy. You, it just feels to me that we are moving into this new age of conscious business where we have tools that we didn't have before. We don't have to do a ropes course, maybe. Maybe we could do a Zoom meeting instead. But that doesn't rule out getting together the team in person and doing some stuff. What I'm saying is there are other options, more options that might get us further faster. Yes. And, you know, leaders often find themselves ineffective stuck. They can see the problems, but they aren't sure to have what the solution might be. They're not sure how to move forward with their projects. And it is incredibly beneficial to have an outside facilitator with a holistic lens, be able to come in and assess the situation at hand. And as you noted earlier, Lee, I like to think of this as the five keys. Um, of the work that I do. And the first thing I do, you know, the first of the five keys is called illuminate. And I go into spaces and conversations with key leaders and we explore the whole landscape. What's working? What's not working? We uh, illuminate what's happening at the emotional level. Again, the physical, the mental and the spiritual. And we get a whole lay of the land. We need to understand all the components of the dynamics said and unsaid, implicit and explicit. I love how you say in this that you assess the chaos and you actually acknowledge and deal with the elephant in the room in this step. I have a golden elephant that I often bring and sit on the table and we name and talk about the elephant and it's creative and it's playful and it gives people permission and it's essential because the, the, Things that aren't said in meetings, the things that aren't said but are running under the surface, 
they, they carry so much energy and it's, um, it's impossible to make change unless you're willing to illuminate, uh, the chaos and assess what is truly happening holistically and the good, you know, all the good that's also in there as well. That's what I love about this is we are leveraging the new energies today. Our gifts that everyone is unfolding, our intuitions are coming online. We do want a voice. We had the great resignation. It's not enough to just have mindless work. It has to be meaningful. I don't want subsidized lunch. I want meaning. And so, you know, when you're that so much energy is lost all of that energy that negative energy you're clearing or if these things that are not said or being the negative self-talk or the talk between that's not said that is keeping that person that organization from using that fuel to make change to to do what they came to do and uh, it's critical. Yes, it is. It is critical. And I, th the next of the keys, the second of the keys is to harmonize. So ask, after we've gone in and illuminated the space, the situation at hand, peeked in all the corners, um, assessed the chaos, the next stage is to harmonize that space. And I have a long list, a toolkit, a very extensive toolkit that comes from my 30 years of experience in coalition building and earth-based wisdom traditions in teaching and leading and facilitating both DEI work, diversity, equity, and inclusion work, and just my coalition building work in general. And I pull out that toolkit and we look at, again, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual, and the physical and go in and do the harmonizing that may take place. That might be a team retreat. That might be a values exercise. That might be a clearing of the physical space. Um, there are numerous, numerous dozens of tools and my work isn't prescriptive. I look at the situation at hand. And so I would look at the situation at hand with that particular leader or organization to assess what they, what they need. And then the fun, I mean, it's all fun, Lee, like this is why I love doing what I do. But the next part I think is so much fun, which is the energize key. The third key is to energize. And it's gathering all those insights and creating that strategic plan. And strategic plan is such a boring word. You know, I, I think it's such a boring word, but I love the work of it because it is about building the scaffolding building the structures that bring vision to ground. And, you know, there are a lot of leaders who have great vision and they get stuck in how you bring that vision to ground through processes, policies, protocols, systems, um, the way your team gathers and relates with one another from start to finish. And I think it's so important to have a strategic plan that is inclusive, that embeds diversity, equity, and inclusion within its policies, practices, and protocols. And it's an alignment tool. You uh -huh. know, it's not like, oh, now we've drafted it and it sits on my hard drive or in the cloud and we look at it once a year. It's like we come back, we come back over and over again to the strategic plan to make sure that our team is in alignment with our mission, with our action plan, with what's happening in the day to day. And it's dynamic. It's living. It can change. This is where your brand story, your brand identity, the marketing plan, your coalition narrative comes in. Because I feel like that's how Communities That Care was so quickly to grow so fast. I believe, of course, that it's because of your consistent message. You put time into crafting, okay, who are we? What does communities that care really stand for and who are we serving and how can we get this in front of them? So this is such a fun part. It's like where you see everything coming together. You've got all of your brand identity and the narrative. You've got your systems in place, how the teams are going to get together. No wonder leaders can't figure out what to do first. I, that just 
that's so much to come in. And I feel like this is really where you've got that whole positioning definition of you cannot read your own label when you're inside of the jar. And with a scope this big to launch a movement, a passion, a project, an organization, gosh, to go through this. So, okay, so we've got Illuminate, which we assess the chaos, harmonize, we cleared things out with the toolkit and either a retreat or maybe values or you maybe you actually cleared this physical space. And then the energize, what comes after that? What's going to happen? Yeah, the fourth key is regenerate. And this is about now that we have our action plan, our strategic plan, we're in alignment. This is about together taking meaningful action. There's a concept, a word in Quechua in the Andean language called ati. And it is the power act of showing up, the power act of doing what you say you're going to do. And Lee, I see this all the time where people have really beautiful strategic plans, but the work they're doing is disconnected from, from that. And so this, this part of the plan is, and this part, this key that I bring is really helping leaders to take that meaningful action, to take that next step, to not get stuck in analysis paralysis. Um, mm -hmm. Leaders want to be seen as being effective. They want to be successful. Uh, one of the things that holds leaders back is uh, fear that they may fail, fear that they're going to be seen as less than competent within the community. I had a client who I worked with recently who was um, bringing together a coalition and needing to hire some key positions and how important it was for them that their funders saw meaningful action because they had been funded mm. uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars with this dream in mind. You know, they had a twinkle in the eye and uh, something really necessary in our community. And so funders were like, oh, that sounds important. We want to put seed money to that, which is incredible. You know, there's that magnetizing force of, this, this is, uh, important work and how, how, um, responsible they felt to those funders to deliver mm -hmm. meaningful action and what a relief it was for them, for us to go through a very deliberate process over a period of time, not too short, not too long, and be able to come back to their funders and say, we did this. We hired these key staff people. We have started this center. We have made progress. Your funds have gone um, exactly where you hoped, and we are moving uh, in the right direction together. And the relief that they felt, the joy that they feel in being seen as being effective leaders. And that's what I'm here to do is help support those leaders in being effective. So Regenerate is about taking the action that your plan mm -hmm. is outlining. And yeah. finally, you know, the fifth is ground to ground, to integrate, to build momentum. You know, we, I think about it in the nature wisdom cycle of the year mm -hmm. and you have a dream and it's like the first winter solstice, the light just starting to turn towards the light again. You plant seeds, you tend the fields you bring in the harvest and then you're able to really settle in and take that next meaningful action. And often this is um, a cycle, a circle, a pattern. Organizations and people go through this over and over again. You may come to ground and then find that you have some chaos that you need to address again, or you may find that your strategic plan needs revisioning or you know, what have you. And so I come and work with leaders wherever they are in this process. And it's not as if, oh, we get to ground and now everything's solved and we never have to come back to this again. We come back to it over and over. And leaders want to feel seen. They want to feel safe, that they have a trusted confidant who is going to hold, you know, all that they're experiencing in confidence. And so that is a key part of my work as well, is to be that sounding board and to ask the questions that help them think about the challenges mm -hmm. and the opportunities in a little bit different way. Uh-huh. Because they know their company, they know their organization, but you can come in and just 
reflect back knowing that journey. There's no catch up. You, you have a deep, deep understanding of even, you know, where they came from the chaos in the beginning that you could even see a pattern that maybe they weren't able to. Yes. I love that the summation of your steps for a conscious coalition is bringing your vision to ground. Yes. You you use that phrase a couple of times, bring it to ground, and there are steps in between. You can't just, you know, it's not just going to appear. There's these steps. And how many times, Lee, do we know people who get just lost in that journey? You know, they have an incredible vision and they just get so lost in the journey. And um, that's my, you know, that's my heartfelt desire and passion. And the reason I do what I do is so delicious to be in that journey with leaders and help them succeed in bringing it to ground. Yeah, there's nothing better than to see it clearly, but guide them to that, that result, you know, so that they experience it in a brand story development. It's critical for power positioning. You know, I really have to dig in. We can't see ourselves the way others see us. Yeah. And then you holistically put it into a business brand context and your revenue plan and you got a ball of mess. And it's yeah. just so much, it's just such a wonderful feeling to see somebody take off with their business and be in such alignment. I hope that's what you felt with your, your messaging that, that, you know, we developed together. That was another thing you brought up. Yes. And thank you, Lee. And I, it, it's that as well as the coalition pieces helping to facilitate cross-organizational collaboration. And you had touched on this in the very beginning of our call, which is, you know, we live in a culture that pits organizations against one another and stealing market share and competition and these kinds of things. But our biggest challenges at this point, both locally, nationally, and globally, require cross-organizational collaboration. They require nonprofit, business leaders, political leaders, and a whole spectrum of folks to work on issues together like affordable housing, climate, uh, Mm -hmm. diversity, equity, justice work. Um, It Mm -hmm. can't just be the school district working on it. It can't just be, you know, one business working on it. And so it's a mind shift for folks to work together and to give, um, to give and receive in that space. And my motto is always, how can I help? What do you need? And I have found over and over again in the work of building coalitions, if I come first with generosity and with care, then when I really need help and support later on, people are so much more willing to be open and collaborative. But if I come first with, here's what I need from you. People are guarded. I call it the making friends campaign. And if there's anything I would say about coalition building, that is the key to come with a, how can I help you and your organization succeed? Because if each organization in the coalition is successful, then the coalition succeeds. It's it's the same thing we do and talk about in lead generation. When you're at a networking meeting, it's not about getting business. It's about how can I serve you? Who are you looking for? Maybe there's somebody in my network that, that you know, needs your services. Yes. And, and by knowing that. And it tri- it just flows everywhere in this age of Aquarius. It's about sharing. It's about collaborating. It's about community and bringing people together. And it's about innovation. If I had yes. to wrap up age of Aquarius, those those are the keys right there. And we're doing it. Thank you so much for this innovative way, this approach to building conscious coalitions. It's just so wonderful. Now, what's the best way for our listeners to get in touch with you? So the best way is to find me online at my LinkedIn profile, Mary Krista Smith, Conscious Coalition Consulting. You can find me there. You can email me. 
and or direct message me through my LinkedIn profile and we can set up a meeting and and talk and I can listen and hear if there are ways that I can help serve you and your organization. So that is the best way. Okay, we'll have those links, Mary Krista, on your show page notes and a way to set up a call with you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And that's like a complimentary call. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. That's really great. We'll have to have you back. I'm so excited to to finally get this information out there. It's so important. And thank you for, for joining us today. Thank you, Lee. And thanks for being a big part of my journey and helping me to bring this to ground. Because as you say, you can't read your own label. And so um, in the spirit of collaborative work, you know, you hold a special niche and gift in the world. And it's different than the one that I offer. So thank you for being my colleague, friend and um, supporter in my business growth. It's been wonderful. See you soon. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Business Leaders with Soul. We hope you enjoyed this discussion into the mind of one of today's authentic thought leaders. We'll be back with another powerful perspective in the next podcast, so be sure to subscribe to get notifications and please share with others. You can connect with us by following Soul Story Creative on LinkedIn or by visiting soulstorycreative.com, where we don't tell you who to be, we show the world who you are. We look forward to seeing you next time.